Now, Sports Talk with Broads. Here's Hunter Brody. What is going on, everyone? The Philadelphia Phillies have a huge stretch of games, and I mean huge. The difference in making or missing the postseason, and they lay an egg. Yup, yup, they laid an egg. The offense, nowhere to be found. They could not hit with runners in scoring position. Their only run was a balk. That's right. Mickey Moniak scored because of a balk. That's the only run that they generated throughout the nine innings against Anibal Sanchez, who didn't pitch the full nine innings. But you get my point. It's not like Anibal Sanchez is Justin Verlander, Clayton Kershaw, Aaron Nola, DeGrom, Max Scherzer. Enter a strong starting pitcher here. It's not like Anibal Sanchez is that guy. So I thought the Phillies offense should have been able to produce way more than one run off of a damn balk. And it's very very frustrating. Did not like Zach Wheeler's day either. I'll be honest with you. Five and two thirds. You need more out of one of your go-to guys. You have two go-to guys. Aaron Nola and Zach Wheeler. You have to win when they are on the bump. Now look, the offense wasn't rolling whatsoever. So you can argue if he gave up just one run, then they're screwed anyway. Well, it would have been a tight game. But you get my point. There wasn't enough offense as a whole did it matter what Zach Wheeler did? And, and I'll counter. Yeah, yeah, it does matter. Because the mentality is different. When it's the first inning and he's allowing Cabrera to knock in a run and Andrew Knapp's throwing a ball that was horrendous down to second base. Soto comes around to score. It's 2 nothing, And he's grinding and, and he's fighting through. He's got to be able to go deeper than five and two-thirds. I'm sorry. I knew he threw 113 pitches and had seven Ks, but I need more out of my go-to guy because then you had to utilize Blake Parker, and that didn't go very smooth. It's not like the team played great defense, though. What the hell was Mickey Moniak doing out there in left field? Airmailing the ball. It goes out of play. The Nats scored two extra runs. That made it five to one. I mean, it was atrocious defensively all around. Whether it was a foul ball that should have been caught. It was a nightmare defensively. It really was. I still demand more out of Zach Wheeler. Because it all starts with the mentality of the squad. When you know you have someone like Zach Wheeler dealing. And he wasn't dealing whatsoever. He had a Vinny V type performance early. High pitch count. Come on, Zach. This is must win territory. You have to be able to execute. The offense sucked, no doubt about it. But I think the mentality changes when one of your guys, one of your top dogs is out there dealing on the bump. That was okay. It was okay. I need more than okay when it's this time of the year and you have two series left, the Nationals and the Tampa Bay Rays, which is going to be a very, very tough series to end the season with. And it's going to come down to the wire. Now, we are broadcasting live from the Manscaped Man Cave. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code BROD at manscaped.com. Joe Girardi and Roman Quinn, you want to get into that debacle? What the hell are you doing, Roman Quinn? I mean, you've been terrible. You've been miserable. The other doubleheader, you struck out six times, right? And now you're going to complain on a strike where you got rung up? It was a strike. Was it not a strike? I mean, it was a strike. And then you get kicked out of the game, forcing Mickey Moniak to have to play outfield when you're already in a terrible scenario when it comes to who's available for this team. And then Joe Girardi, who sticks up for you because, you know, he's pissed off, he's frustrated, he gets kicked out of the game. You need the... I mean, Roman Quinn stinks, let's be fair here. But in terms of bodies, you need bodies at the moment. And... Mickey Moniak being the alternative, this kid's not ready for the major, so you're putting this poor kid in a situation that he doesn't need to be in. When we're talking about the final stretch, here's Mickey Moniak playing for the Philadelphia Phillies. I mean, it's just a flat-out disgrace, and he should not be in that situation. Even though Roman Quinn is absolutely trash, he's a better option than Mickey Moniak, okay? And Joe Girardi needs to be available to make decisions, to go to the bull 
bullpen, right? He needs to be able to make those decisions. And all because Roman Quinn wanted to yap away and complain, you struck out. It's that simple. It's not rocket science here. When the ball goes behind you and it's in the square that the catcher catches the ball, it's going to be called. So come on, you got to think with your head here. We rip Roman Quinn all the time because of his poor defensive plays, and he has no IQ. He's just a fast runner. He's someone who could be a factor on the bases. There's no denying that. I'm not a big fan of his baseball IQ when it comes to defense. He tries to die for balls all the time. The ball gets behind him. He's terrible when it comes to trying to jump for a ball instead of maybe playing it off the wall. He's not a very smart baseball player, and I think that showed in that spot right there. You need to think more than that. You do. You got to understand the circumstances. Mickey Moniak. Mickey Moniak. Mickey Moniak. Incredible stuff. <sighs> You're going to have to utilize Aaron Nola and Zach Wheeler at the end of the season. That is troublesome. That is an issue. Because guess what? I'm excited to see Aaron Nola in the postseason. That's my number one thing. If you said, Broads, what are you excited about most when it comes to this team making the postseason? It's not actually winning anything. This bullpen is an embarrassment. So it's not as if I trust this team to go out there and win at all. I just want to see Aaron Nola pitch, really. That is what I truthfully want to see. I want to see Aaron Nola pitch. But it's at the point now where he's going to have to pitch late. He's going to have to pitch maybe that last game of the season, and then you don't see him at all. And then you might have to start Zach Eflin in the postseason because Zach Wheeler might have to pitch as well pretty damn close to the end of the season. You might have Zach Eflin start your playoff series. I really doubt they go with the Vince Velasquez, right? Please tell me that would never be in their cards. But who the hell knows with this organization? I would be so crushed, though, if they squeak into this damn thing in an already flawed system, and I don't even get to see Aaron Nola start the series off. But let's be realistic. That's the road that this is trending down, right? This is going to be going down to the very last game, the very last strike, probably, and it doesn't help that they're going to they're gonna see, they're going to face such a lethal squad in Tampa Bay. How about... The Nats trying to throw it Alec Boehm. Oh, hit him with a pitch. All right, dude. Okay. <laughs> Alec Boehm just gets hits. I guess that's almost a confidence thing, if you will. Like a, a positive thing, if you will. They're coming after you because they know you hit. They're coming after you because you know you can get the job done because you can execute. They're not happy. Oh, I didn't mean to. It slipped. Oh, the classic. It slipped. Yeah, it slipped. Yeah, so did this. Boom! I'm about to hit. No, sadly, that did not happen, of course, but come on. That's what happens when you are a factor, when you're on the other team's radar. They're going to throw at you. All right, Alec Boom, eat it. Eat it. Take first base, and we'll figure it out from there. Maybe we'll attack some of your guys later on. It was the first Nationals win against the Phillies all damn season long. So maybe they were just fed up with constantly losing to this team. But can I really sit here and brag the Phillies stink? It would be different if we were in the same position as the Dodgers or some other team that actually has a damn chance to do anything. The Philadelphia Phillies are a bad baseball team. So who am I to now chirp the Nationals for losing or or finally winning a game against this team, yet they're reigning champions, and I haven't seen playoff baseball in, what, eight years at this point? And even if they do find a way this year, I barely value it at all. I want to get to what Matt Glentak said, by the way. Okay, because Matt Glentak is a pathetic loser. That's right. He's a pathetic loser. We need to hear these quotes. Uh, I'm going to throw up, though. The fact that this is the mentality of our front office is not okay. It's not okay. And it's a problem with everybody involved. Not just Matt Glentak. Everybody involved, including our very owner, John Middleton. So, Matt Klentak was asked if the performance of Sixto Sanchez puts more pressure on the Phillies to sign JT Realmuto. 
I, I mean, look, I think with my, what I've said all along is you know, we would we would love to have JT here, but when you make that when you make that trade, um, you know, you're trading for two years of control, and you know that. So, um, you know, Sixto looked really good against us. He's looked good this year, um, but you know, we've we've had two very productive years of JT as well. Uh, shut up. Shut up. You make that trade knowing two years of control is what you're getting out of JT Romuto. That's a flawed mindset. That is an issue with the front office. If they make a trade like Sixto Sanchez for JT with only the idea of keeping this man for two seasons. Not only that, how about valuing Sixto Sanchez? It's almost as if they didn't properly realize what type of talent he was going to be. We talk about how they can't develop guys, how they can't actually actually produce players that you can call up. Now, Alec Bohm is nice, without a doubt. I am really intrigued with what Alec Bohm has brought to the table. But you need to be able to hit way more than just Alec Bohm. Not, not so much Alec Bohm hitting, but from a, from a front office standpoint, hitting on prospects, you need more than just Alec Bohm. And the fact that they can't draft and, and really dial in on pitchers specifically. Aaron Nola, congratulations. That's it. The fact that they can't get these legit studs, and they finally have one, and one that is at an all-time high. It's not like it's a, 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 another Aaron Nola, and that's no disrespect to Aaron Nola, but Sixto Sanchez is literally Pedro Martinez 2.0-ish, okay? And that's not a knock on Aaron Nola because I think Aaron Nola is a phenomenal pitcher. That's just praising what Pedro Martinez was in this damn league. And you have some kid who's on the uprise that looks exactly the same as him. Literally, it looks exactly the same. Everything, the leg kick, the follow-through, the stuff, it's magnificent. And you let that kid out the door because of two years of control on a catcher? That is a problem that they think it's okay in, in their brains to go down a road like that. That scenario I just laid out. Giving up Sixto Sanchez, who clearly they didn't recognize his skill set properly, for two years of JT Real Muto, knowing that that's what they had with this guy. Because why? Because you thought you had a roster that was ready to compete? This team is far from competing. You need a lot, a lot of pieces. Specifically, hold on a second, pitching. <laughs> they need another starter. I love Nola. I love Wheeler. They need another starter, and I hate to break it to you. It's not Spencer Howard, and it's not Jake Arrieta. So did they bring JT Real Muto in thinking this guy was going to put them over the top to win a championship? If that's the case, then once again, we have a problem with the brains inside of the front office members and possibly the owner of this entire organization, don't we? I mean, seriously, don't we? If that's the case, I would have to say yes. Because there's no way that you look at this team and you go, they can compete. They looked at this bullpen and thought they could compete. Seriously? Matt Klentak should be fired after this year. There's a problem, though. John Middleton extended. Extended McPhail. Remember, they did it quietly. During a year of COVID, would they be willing to pay somebody like Matt Klentak money while hiring somebody else and going down that road as well? I asked if the Sixers were going to do that with Brett Brown, and they alluded to. That doesn't mean Joshua Harris and John Middleton, though, are on the same exact page. And I really hope not because Joshua Harris and, and David Blitzer, they're they are bad. They're bad. I don't ever want to associate myself with them. And it's a shame I can't force them to sell the team. So if John Middleton and, and, and you have Joshua Harris on the same wavelength, then we got some monster issues here in Philadelphia. Although I guess you can argue we already do if you want to dissect it. Now, this episode of Sports Talk with Broads is sponsored by Orbit Energy and Power. Their solar program helps eliminate your electric bill completely. In addition, they will make sure you receive all the state and federal incentives available for switching to solar. There's no risk and no need for investment. With the solar energy system, you can increase the value of your home 
by an average of 4.1%. They also provide water purification systems, backup energy services, battery storage, and more. Make sure you check out their information. It's all in the description. I didn't get a chance to talk about how that um, Blue Jays series ended. They ended up having a, a nice win b- because of the bullpen, believe it or not. Tommy Hunter with the big save. This was the second to last game of the series. Tommy Hunter with the big save. Interesting. I'm just curious how Joe Girardi is going to utilize that save position down the road. We know Workman is not going to be someone that he relies on. And Hector Neris, maybe he just thinks, look, this isn't working. Hector Neris does not have his best stuff and really hasn't all season long. Do I need to go in another direction? He threw Tommy Hunter out there, and I thought he did a fine job. Maybe because he looked so solid and he looked so comfortable and he looked to be confident in his stuff at that moment. Will he try and do that again? I mean, look, I know the alternatives don't work. I know the closers, and I'm using air quotes, on your team right now isn't getting the job done. So does it hurt to try something new? No, it doesn't. I just I want to see what's going to happen the next time the Phillies are in a save situation. They did end up following the last game of the series against the Blue Jays, but can I be mad at them for winning as many games as they did? I mean, you can't win them all. I know this stretch is very important, but you know, to demand them to win them all is just not reality, but you got to put together and string together a bunch of wins to make this thing successful and to make the postseason. So overall, the Blue Jays series was a success. Bryce Harper did leave the game. He had a big moment there with bases loaded, could not get a hit, and then you see himself kind of check check out of the game, points to his hip, although I think it was reported it was back stiffness that knocked him out of that baseball game. Look, he played, he played in this one against the Nats, although it wasn't like he was strong whatsoever. Struck out a bunch of times. So I was really hoping that that stretch he went on, hitting doubles, hitting doubles, crushing home runs, and I mean literally obliterating the baseball. I thought that would be this great, great difference-making stretch for him that could put him over the hump and put this team over the hump because you feed off of your top players producing and executing, and hopefully this injury isn't why he had such a bad performance in this one, but obviously there's something going on with his back. I'm just assuming at this point he's fighting through it, he's pushing through it, and he's trying to help out this ball club in a time of need. You definitely can't have Bryce Harper out of this lineup. It's already struggling as it is. You don't have JT Romuto, although you hear that it's possible he's coming back and he could maybe DH so let's hope he's getting back on track here Reese Hoskins out it's definitely tough to look at it's tough to look at right now they got to turn the page real quick real quick tomorrow and I'm pretty positive that they skip Max Scherzer and uh Patrick Corbin, which is obviously two huge pitchers that you skip out on when you face the Nationals. I'm just looking at the the schedule, and I want to see the matchups for who exactly is set for the rest of the way um, because that's big, you know. And with Zach Wheeler on the mound, if if this would load, oh, you got a bull, you got the double header tomorrow. That's right. I know one of them's the bullpen game. The other one's Aaron Nola. Um. She'll be able to win that one, but you need Aaron Ola to perform. His last outing, he wasn't good enough. He needed to be better. You got to have Aaron Nola at the top of his game when these games matter. I said I want to see him in the postseason. Well, guess what? Those postseason games, the intensity is going to be on another level. The binoculars are going to be at an extreme high because you are now being criticized every single little pitch if you can't get the job done down the stretch to even get to the postseason where we are going to have a problem. Zach Eflin pitches after him. That's not a doubleheader, right? Yeah, there's only one doubleheader left in this national series. And I, I, I do not want to think about these last games. Finney V, although things can change. But Vinny V went, what, six innings in his last outing? He had three brutal innings to start, high pitch count, and then he ended up finding his groove, and then people were satisfied with him. Yep, then Zach Wheeler and and Aaron Nola to close things off. Whew. 
can they win both games tomorrow? You saw them finally win two games in a doubleheader against the Blue Jays. Can they do it again against the Nationals? You're playing with fire to ask your bullpen to win a damn game. They just did it, though. Now, it was wild. They probably shouldn't have won, but Bryce Harper came up super clutch, super clutch with a double that should have been a home run, but the wind was all crazy that day. It kept him in, and, and that ended up tying the game, and Alec Bohm stepped up. Of course, Alec Bohm did, and ended up hitting in the winning run. So it was close. The bullpen allowed a ton of runs in that game. They won 8-7, to seven, so it wasn't as if the bullpen just shut them down completely. If the offense that showed up today is the one that shows up in that game, well, you're not going to sniff a victory at all. The, the problem I have with this specific game, the 5-1 to one loss against the Nationals, you showed up with no life. You know how big these games are. You see the standings. I know Zach Eflin the other day was asked, oh, do you guys check the standings? And he was like, no. What? Yes, you do. The, the right answer is yes. You want to make sure you have all the proper information around you. You are dedicated to this game, and you want to play playoff baseball, right? Well, you are looking at the standings then, because everybody wants to make the postseason, and here you are with barely any games left. You're telling me you don't know where these teams are when it comes to the standings. Stop with that garbage. Yes. Yes, you do know where everybody is. And, and I just feel as a team, you look at this team, right, and, and you look at where they are, and you come up flat, and you don't play your best game, and you do have limited chances with guys with in scoring position, and you can't get that big hit, you can't get that big knock. It's a close game. You're one run because Mickey Moniak and the bulk. You got guys in scoring position. Flat, 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 flat. And then defensively, don't even get me started. Way too many errors. Just way too many. And that Mickey Moniak throw from left field. Stop. Stop. I can't take it anymore. I think I replayed that over and over and over again maybe 300 times. Where the hell was he throwing that baseball? What was he doing? Who was he trying to throw that to? Please let me know. Was there somebody he was targeting that I didn't see on the field? Because that thing just slipped out of his hand or something. I'm watching. Where? Where the hell is he going with that? There goes two runs. I thought late, you had a chance. Had men on. Mickey Moniac up. Could you get it to the top of the lineup? Oh, could you get it to the top of the lineup? He actually worked a decent at bat in the beginning. And then what do you know? Strikes out. Ball game's over. And the Phillies go home with a very brutal loss. We'll see how they respond tomorrow. They know how important these games are. We need Bryce Harper to step up. We need him to get back on that double, 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 home run, home run train that he went on. Because that's the life of the party. When Bryce Harper does that, it seems everybody else is following. And right now, you got to look at your guys to step up. Zach Wheeler was one of them. He didn't. Aaron Nola is one of them. Let's see if he does. Bryce Harper is one of them. I would say Didi Gregorius is one. I mean, at this point, Alec Bohm is one. But these players, like, they need to produce. Am I supposed to get mad at Scott Kingery, Roman Quinn, and, and the lesser players, Adam Hazley? Like, they are who they are, right? But these top guys, if you want to carry this team to where you want to be, well, let's go. Show it. Prove it to me. There you have it. Thank you all so much for listening, and I will see you next time.